When I was an undergraduate at Monash, uh, there was it was oh, great days, heady days back in the 1970s with people like Simon Molesworth and various others around. But there was a tradition of um, uh, political activism on campus and one of the people who I must say is now one of my Facebook friends was Red Bingham and Red was called Red for two reasons. One he had long red hair and a long red beard and two he was an anarchist and Red did something I didn't know you were allowed to do. Don't worry I'm not going to do it but he would start all his political speeches with a song and um, this became quite a tradition and when the time came after six years when he graduated with an arts degree, <laughs> he went along to the uh, formal graduation ceremony and all the mums and dads are there and everyone's dressed up with their mortarboards and gowns and so on. And he went across the stage and got his degree and doffed his cap and then he stood at the front of the stage at the Robert Blackwood Hall and held up his degree and sang. An arts degree, an arts degree is better than working in a factory. <laughs> and I, I tell that story because at least someone was thinking about why they were doing their degree. And... Um, when we think about the law, one of the things we should be thinking about is what is the law for? Why do we have it? Because if you follow the commentary on the law, it's very discouraging. It's like a morality play. There are heroes and villains. There's people demanding closure, something the law can never really offer. Why do we have it at all? We've talked about the rule of law, Adam's... Um, taken us through that concept already this morning. I'm not going to answer the question. I do have answers, as you might think, but I actually think it's more valuable for us to uh, make that exploration and journey ourselves. And here in Australia, amongst the many issues which at the moment have our leaders floundering, one of them is the issue of asylum seekers. And we have from the major parties what is largely a, a bipartisan approach, which I think means going to the lowest common denominator. And what we don't see from them is leadership. And I raise that because if we're going to have leadership in that and other areas, a lot of it may have to come from the people in this room. It's a very powerful thing to have legal qualification and it opens up a lot of opportunities and a lot of responsibilities go with that. Well, Australia is an island, but our capital is globalised, our media and communications are globalised and uh, our great environmental issues, of course, are no respecters of national boundaries. One of the uh, paradigms that we see in relation to asylum seekers is this concept, and I heard it from Scott Morrison yesterday, that the, the, the language of border protection. Now, it, it is, it's got nothing to do with border protection. People who come to this country seeking or to invoke the protection of our jurisdiction don't threaten our borders at all. They're actually wanting the protection of our borders. But there is a threat to our borders, and Adam referred to it with the uh, migration zone, all the internal uh, uh, disruption to our borders by taking away the rights that we uphold as part of our national values. So... People... Uh, in the global world, when they are in danger, seek protection and seek to go elsewhere and, of course, some of them seek to come here. And what should our attitude be to asylum seekers? Well, there is going to be a need for some, not just moral, but also intellectual heavy lifting um, so that we can digest the problems and sift and weigh solutions and 
We've got two very important guides for us in that process this morning. The first that I'd like to introduce is Julian Burnside, who at one level needs no introduction, but I'll let him talk about that. But what I do want to say is that Julian's been a colleague of mine for many years, but also been very active in the area of human rights. We've both been involved in Liberty Victoria. Um, he's uh, particularly been known for his stance on asylum seekers and calling the government on it, often when it's been, um, I guess, at some professional cost. Julian's been active in um, court cases, including the Tampa case where he was lead counsel, but also many cases for refugees, including many in the High Court challenging um, particular stances that government has taken. Uh, please welcome Julian Burnside, a living national treasure. 